Now that we've seen what the graphs of sine and cosine look like, let's figure out how to perform transformations on these functions or how to graph transformations of these functions. And the first thing that I want to start off with is this number in front of each one of these trig functions, which we've called A. Well, if you take the absolute value of A, we call that the amplitude. Okay. And this does precisely what you might remember it does. And here's what I mean. If you say had f of x is equal to x squared, and then you just did f of x is equal to 2x squared, all you're doing is doubling all the y values. You've stretched this thing vertically by a factor of 2. So I'm just going to write in parentheses here. This is our vertical stretch factor. All right, and don't forget, this isn't necessarily always a stretch. It could be a compression as well. And let's go ahead and write in here what sine of x looks like. That way we can see what all these transformations on it um, look like. Okay. So let's start off with, again, sine of x. I'm just marking some points in here to try and make this easier for me to graph and so you can see it completes that one period in two pi radians okay. so if we were to say look at y equals I'm going to use the same factor here about y equals 2 sine of x where this original one, again, was just sine of x. Then we're just going to double all, all of our y values. So here in the middle here, this should go up to 2 now instead of 1. And in the middle of these two points here, we should go down all the way to minus 2 instead of minus 1. The overall shape's going to be the same. Let's look at our next transformation, 2 pi over b. Okay, what, what is this? What is 2 pi over b? Well, it ends up that, well, actually, I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Let's find out. Let's go over here and we'll graph y equals sine of 2x. Okay. So think about this for a second. Do you remember what happens when we put numbers next to x in our function. So it actually either is going to compress or stretch our function. Okay. And the way that I like to think about it is this 2 that you see here in front of the x, it's going to make all of our y values pop up twice as fast. Okay. So if originally it took us 2 pi units to do one period, now it's only going to take us pi units. Again, so all it's done is it's just taken and squished the graph of y equals sine of x so that it completes a full cycle in pi radians instead of two pi radians. And so that's all this is over here, it's the period. And the reason that it's 2 pi over b is 2 pi is kind of like our standard period, right? That, that's what the period of sine of x and cosine of x is. And if you put a 2 in front of the x, right, it's going to um, cut the period in half. So that 2 actually is going to go down here. Or if we put a 3 in front of the x, the 3 would go down here. Because now it's going to take a third of the time to complete one cycle, okay, and so on. 
so there's the period. Then plus D, this is probably the easiest one. Let's, uh, let's see where that is here. It is at the end of each one of these. This is just our vertical shift. And this is going to scoot our graph up D units, assuming we're adding. If we're subtracting a number, it's going to scoot our graph down. And so if we made a quick sketch of that. Well, if we say did y equals sine of x plus 1. Well, if you remember looking actually at all the graphs up above so far, the middle of the wave is along the x-axis. But because of that plus 1, the middle of the wave now for us is going to be here at y equals 1 instead of y equals 0. And if we were to sketch this, it's going to look the same. It's just, again, scooted up one unit. Let me fix that. I don't like that. There we go. That looks a little bit neater. All right. And then on to our last one that we're going to draw a picture of on this list. And this is this C over B. All right. So we're going to do a little bit of algebra to see what this is. So let's say we were looking at this a sine of bx minus c. We could rewrite this by factoring a b out. And if we do that, this is x minus c over b. All right. And if you don't like that factoring, you can double check your work. If we were to distribute this b back through, we'd get sine of b times x minus c, just like we originally had. And you might recognize this. When you see x minus something in a function, that means it's going to scoot us to the right that many units. And if you see x plus something, it's going to scoot us in the other direction. And let me make sure I said that right. This x minus c over b is going to scoot us to the right c over b units. And if it was x plus c over b, we'd shift to the left c over b units. So this, we call it our phase shift. But this is really just our horizontal shift. All right. And let's take a look at an example. Let's try out, oh, y equals sine of 4x minus pi. So this would be the c here. This would be the b. And if you did c over b, you'd get pi over 4. Right. So we're going to take our original graph and we're just going to scoot it over so that we start here, scooting over pi over four units. And if you subtract these endpoints, so do nine pi over four minus pi over four, you'll see that that just comes out to two pi. Last on our list here is the spacing. And let's, let's move up a little bit here so we can kind of see um, what I mean by spacing. Okay, so if we're looking at this graph here of cosine, you can see that I've spaced everything out by pi over twos. And the whole purpose of that was that these y values are really nice 
at all these x values I chose to put on the x-axis. And by really nice, again, we mean 1, 0, minus 1. Um, and, well, for this function, that's what we mean. Okay. Now, when we do s some sort of a transformation on, on these functions, the, the spacing is not necessarily going to be by pi over 2. Let's see maybe how we came up with that. If we were to look at... just this first period here, you can see that we've actually split this period from 0 to 2 pi into four equal chunks. So all we really did is we just found the period of the function and divided it by 4, and that gave us our spacing. Okay, and so that's what we're going to write um, at the end of the next page. Let me get rid of this and we'll go write that. The period over four.